Version 10 introduces lots of enhancements to many of the drawing tools in the software to help improve and maximise workflow. So let's take a look at these improvements. Node editing can now be performed on multiple vectors selected at the same time, making it easier to access all the nodes and spans in your job for multiple editing without having to access each vector individually. We have also added the ability to transform your vectors directly from the span itself, allowing you to drag individual spans and changing their shape in the case of arcs and beziers, or moving the whole span in the case of lines, for a much easier intuitive workflow getting you to the shape you want in no time. In cases where you have two open vectors, you can select the endpoints of each vector and join them together whilst remaining in node edit mode using the right click menu, where you can join them with a straight line, a curve or the midpoint between the two. When rotating and scaling objects, the original bounds are now maintained, allowing you to scale rotated objects along their axes more easily and intuitively. To accommodate this enhancement, we've also updated various transformation tools to include the rotated bounds when making transformations to a rotated vector. And so in the move tool, we can now move objects relative to their rotated bounds. When we scale the size of a rotated object, we can now scale the parts in line with the rotated bounds of a selected object. In terms of rotation, you can now rotate objects to an absolute value as well as a relative value to the current bounds. When working with rotated objects in the mirror tool, we can check the option to use the rotated bounds and all mirroring applications will be relative to the bounds of the rotated object. When using the Distort tool on a rotated object, we can now edit the envelope within the rotated bounds, making it much easier to control the shape of the distortion. When you import a bitmap, you now have the ability to rotate it directly in the software using the rotation handles on the corners of the image. The font list in both the create and create text within a vector box form will now save the five most recently used fonts at the top of the list to allow quicker selection of frequently used fonts. That way you save time searching for that favourite font of yours. The number displayed can easily be edited in the program options form to a value that you are happy to use. The welding tool has been greatly improved to include the welding of text objects all at the click of a button, which is perfect for overlapping style fonts. Simply select your text, use the weld option where it will keep all of the internal regions of the text characters. And you have the option to keep or replace the original text object. You'll be welding text in no time. When text is placed on a curve, its anchor can now be freely moved, rather than being limited to the standard three predefined locations of left, right and centre, we can now move the anchor to give us much greater control of the position of the wrapped text. Another enhancement that we have made is that the wrapped text can be detached from the original curve and still be reworked in the wrapped text form, where it remembers the original settings of the wrap if you ever wanted to make further changes down the line.
We've added an extra option in the Draw Polygon form, where you're now able to create a polygon by specifying the length of a side. For example, if I wanted to create an equilateral triangle where all the sides are two inches long, I can simply specify this in the form and the software will do all the hard work for me. We've added in a shortcut to quickly get you into a shapes form for further editing. If a vector is selected which is able to be modified using one of the shape drawing tools, so the circle, ellipse, rectangle, polygon or star, then by simply pressing the letter E on your keyboard, the software will now automatically open the correct shape creation tool for the selected shape. We've updated the behaviour of the space selection controls within the alignment tools form, where it will now maintain the X or Y ordering of any selected vectors and space them between the top and bottom or left and right items in the selection, regardless of what order we selected the vectors in. We've made improvements to the nesting tool, making it more intuitive to use, and we've also added the ability to nest double-sided parts. When nesting parts, we've made it easier to see what parts will be nested before applying the nest command. So when you select your vectors for nesting, the software will indicate what it believes to be parts, and you will see that represented by the thick black outline. Any vectors that overlap an outer boundary, for example, here we have dados that extend the bounds of the cutout shape, will be included in the outline for the part, and any vectors that lie inside the bounds of the outer vector will be highlighted with a brown colour, and this is to represent areas that the software identifies as holes in the workpiece. With the addition of displaying the outer boundaries for the parts to be nested, these outlines will be used during the nesting process and so parts will be nested in a much more space efficient way. If you are working in a double sided job, the nesting form will automatically switch on the nest two sided parts option, allowing you to nest vectors on both sides of your material. Again, the visual indicators are handy in that we are able to visualise whole parts where vectors overlap each other on both sides. So now let's have a look at some of the new features that we've added where it concerns model assembly and clip art. We have added over 40 new pieces of 2D clip art to help you get started with all sorts of projects. You'll find a selection of vector game layouts, ranging from cribbage boards to peg solitaire and tic-tac-toe. We have a selection of rotary profiles that you can use to model spindles in a rotary job and there's a selection of moulding profiles for use with the moulding toolpath to create generic parts such as frames and mouldings, as well as a selection of stylized words which would be perfect for v-carving. We have also included 40 texture fill tiles that have been carefully created from the existing tile clip art using the texture area tool. So all you need to do is drag the tile out and it will fill out with the pattern that it was created from. You can now easily copy components into other levels of your job by simply holding down the control key on your keyboard whilst dragging the component into a different level, helping to speed up your assembled 3D project. We've added a new property to the levels in the modeling tab, where you now have the ability to clip components to a vector, giving you more scope when creating assembled layouts in the software. When this option is enabled, the level will be constrained to the chosen vector without affecting the underlying components. 
You can rearrange components and modify the underlying design and the results will be dynamically clipped away in the composite model without actually cropping the component itself. Simply create a vector you wish to clip the level to, shift and right click on the level that you want to clip and select the clipping option. For good measure, name the level clipping level for your convenience and then simply assemble clip art within that level to get the composition that you're looking for. Now we're going to move on and look at the new and enhanced features where it concerns modeling in the software. We've added a new model editing tool which replaces the replace below gadget. This tool allows you to trim or flatten the bottom of a component or multiple components. For example, it could be that you've imported an STL model that has a lot of thickness, which can be quite typical of 3D scan data. And this tool will allow us to simply trim away the unwanted thickness. This height can be manually typed in or we could simply double click on an area on the model itself that we want to remove and the form will update according to the Z value of where you clicked. Simply select if you would like to replace this with transparency or a plane. The final option in the form also allows you to drop the component by the value that we're removing to, to help keep your models to standard relief heights. We've made a couple of improvements to the sculpting tools where we've added the option to save presets. So if you have a favorable setting for a particular sculpting tool and application, you can now save the settings as a preset that you can name and access in later sessions from a drop-down list to quickly reinstate those settings, saving you time and effort in the long run. We've also added the option to overlay a bitmap image over the component that you are sculpting. Simply select the bitmap along with the component you want to sculpt and go into the sculpting tools. Now this enhancement is perfect for when you are sculpting areas that require you to refer to the original image that you are working from in order to help you get the model to a finished state. For example, this would be perfect for faces and animals. And to help you achieve this, you have the ability to alter the image opacity to reveal as much or as little of the bitmap as you would like, helping you get the final finesse finish that you've always wanted. Now we're going to explore the vast amount of new and enhanced features that we've added to toolpaths. The tool database has been given a significant overhaul where different materials and machines can now be added and tooling information can be specific to these settings. So if you find that you are using the same tool but want different feeds and speeds for different materials, you can now just add a material and simply adjust the parameters of existing tools that will differ for the material that you are machining. And this really saves you the hassle of duplicating tools. Simply add a new material Give that material a name and then press apply and then select the tool you already have stored in the database that you wish to copy the settings from and then you can just make your adjustments to the tool to suit the material that you're machining into. And so you can see that when I switch between plywood and hardwood I am using the same tool but the parameters and feeds differ making my database more organized and this ability to change cutting parameters whilst keeping the geometry the same prevents a lot of duplication in your tool database. And when you are ready to machine, you can filter the tools where you can select to view only the tools that are compatible with your selected material by using the right click option. We've made improvements to the way that you can actually name your tools. Simply click on the edit tool name icon where the name format mechanism will open, allowing you to choose what information is displayed for the tools. So by default here, you can see that I have a field for the tool type, an end mill, the diameter, whether that's in a fraction form or as a value, and then the units, where the short option now displays inches correctly and you can customise what fields you want to show using the right-click menu. 
And so by entering the field information, when I now come to edit various parameters in the tool database, the software will automatically update the name, ensuring that the tool name always matches the tool dimensions. You also have the ability to view the chip load on the tool from within the software, where you can now add the number of flutes the tool has and the chip load will be calculated accordingly. And for more information and to see the tool database in action, please take a look at the tool database and migrate in your tool database guide tutorials from the tutorial browser. It's now easy to share your tool database across the machines that you use. The new tool database can be synced with your online Vinco account, so that changes made to the tool database on one machine are reflected across your other running instances. Simply log into your Vinco account directly from the tool database, and in the software you are now able to upload and import your tool database from your Vinco account, making it much easier to access your updated tool and information across all machines. We've introduced a new toolpath to the software, the Photo VCarve toolpath. This toolpath strategy enables you to use a V-bit tool to etch a picture into the surface of your material. The software takes your image and creates a series of lines at different depths to produce the desired image. Simply import your image and select it with the Photo VCarve tool. Specify your cut depths and choose a tool to use, then select a strategy. There are three options to choose from. Raster to create a single set of lines, Hatch to create two sets of parallel lines to create the crosshatch effect and for both of these effects you have the ability to control the line spacing and the line angle also. The third strategy available allows us to use the selected vectors option where you choose vectors to machine along which can create some very pleasing and unique effects. The software will simulate the preview. Once you're happy with the preview, you're halfway to creating exclusive pieces of art that make timeless gifts. To learn more about this tool, please take a look at the Photo VCarve Toolpath Guide tutorial. The VCarve Toolpath now supports multiple clearance tools for more efficient area clearance. Using multiple tools means that you can use a much larger area clearance tool and intermediate V-bit tools to ensure that the fine detail tool only needs to remove the smallest amount of material possible. Simply check the option to use clearance tools and add in as many or as little tools desired to clear out the area required, where all the tools selected will leave an allowance for the V-carving tool. The first tool in the list will remove as much material as it can and subsequent tools will only machine areas the previous tools could not fit. Using multiple tools with this strategy can help shorten machining time and improve the life of your tools. We've enhanced the way that we deal with v-carving intersecting text in the software where text is automatically welded with the welding tool before being v-carved without it actually affecting the text object, making the whole process much quicker and easier to perform. Another improvement that we've added to the v-carve toolpath is the ability to detect and warn users about the presence of intersections within the selected vectors. If you had a vector that had intersections, the software will prompt you on calculating the toolpath to run the vector validator to help locate problematic areas. Within the vector validator, the software will automatically put you into vCarve mode, but the software will ignore the intersections that will be welded by the toolpath itself and focus on areas outside of the v-carving mode, helping you to locate the issues before the toolpaths are simulated. The toolpaths that use the raster strategy should now generate more consistent toolpaths in regards to their machining direction. To help avoid instances where the tool would come back to clear out an area in the cutout which could cause the material to break away. 
This also applies to the 3D finish toolpath when machining 3D parts. We've also enhanced the raster strategy in the roughing toolpath to allow you to have more control over the direction of cut. Select the raster direction along X or Y and then choose whether you want to reverse the step direction. As a result, you should now be able to generate more consistent toolpaths in regards to the machining direction. The roughing toolpath strategy has been enhanced to add an additional order and type, where the depth first option can now be chosen. This strategy machines regions to the full roughing depth and then moves on to the next region rather than machining all the regions to a fixed level, which is what the level by level option does. For compositions with distinct separate regions, the depth first option can be much quicker and results in significantly fewer air moves. When creating lithophanes in the software, you now have the option to visualise the lithophane effect on your simulated toolpaths, making it easier to see what your part will look like before cutting. The lithophane mode allows the preview to be shaded to give the effect of a semi-transparent material which is being lit from behind as you would with a lithophane, where the thinnest areas of the material will appear the brightest. Just enable the lithophane mode from within the simulation and use the slider to adjust the brightness to suit. And so this function will help to determine what the finished part will look like when we cut it on the CNC. Toolpaths can now be grouped within the toolpath tree, making managing complex jobs more straightforward. Right click in the toolpath tree and choose the option to create a group. This enables you to organise your toolpaths into logical groups. Simply drag the toolpaths into the group desired. And then to remove a group, right click and select delete this. Or you'll be prompted to choose to keep or delete the sub toolpaths within the list. When working with a project that has more than one sheet, the software will now ask if you want to apply that template to every sheet in the job when you load in a toolpath template. Any toolpaths generated will be prefixed by their sheet number and grouped in the toolpath tree for your convenience, ensuring for a speedy workflow with less of the manual fuss. Toolpath merging is a powerful tool for combining separate toolpaths into a single, more efficient toolpath. It's been enhanced by allowing you to edit and modify all the original toolpaths while still maintaining the merging information. Switch on the visibility of all the toolpaths you wish to merge together and use the merge tool. Specify how you want to merge the toolpaths and the software will create a parent toolpath and contains all the original toolpaths as a sub toolpath. Each sub toolpath can be modified and the merging is automatically updated, making it much easier for you to edit toolpaths that have been merged. We have made an enhancement to the way that we project toolpaths in a rotary job, where toolpaths can now be projected onto 3D models even if they fall outside of the job space. And so this allows for the easier creation of spiral toolpaths being projected onto your 3D model. When you save out toolpaths, we've made it easier to locate your favourite posts where the post processor list will now save and display the five most recently used post processors at the top of the list, allowing for quicker selection of frequently used posts. So now let's take a look at some of the changes that we've made to the user interface. We've made it easier to add new material textures to the software directly from the appearance drop down menus. If you have a picture of the material you want to add, you can just select add new texture from within the appearance drop down menu. 
For example, I want to add an aluminium texture to my metals category, so simply click on add new texture, locate your bitmap, press open and that material will be stored in your drop down menu. You can also create your own category too. Head to the top of the list and click new category, give it a name and then add in your material textures. And so the whole process of importing bitmap textures directly from within the software has been made much easier. For your convenience, all the tabs in the software are now resizable, where you can pull the tabs out to expand it to fit even the longest of names, ensuring that you have full visibility of the longer named items in your project. Version 10 adds the ability to use different settings for default file locations. So that means that you can now choose to have the software remember specific locations for specific actions. And so you could initially choose a folder where you would always like to open images from. For example, you could choose your pictures directory and the software will remember and use that location for future reference. This ability to remember file locations applies to all items that can be saved and imported in the software. To do this, simply go to Edit, then go into Options, and then select the file dialog default. Select Operation to open files in the last used location for this operation. So you will need to initially save or import items from a location to enable the software to remember this. Now, as I've already done this, you can see that I can now import images from my pictures folder. I can then go ahead and create some vectors. And if I wanted, I could export those vectors out to the last location I saved or imported vectors from, which is from my vector folder. And then I can go ahead and create a toolpath from my vectors and then look at saving out the toolpaths to my predefined toolpath saving location, giving me complete control over where I save things to for a more organised, efficient workflow. Alternatively, you could choose to always open the file dialogues in the folder of the current project. Getting help in the software has never been easier, as now you can get help for all the forms using the handy integrated help functionality. Simply click on the question mark icon on the top of each form to get the help for that specific function, helping you get to the documentation quicker and easier directly from the tool you want to learn more about. On top of all the new and improved features that we've added to version 10, you're also entitled to select one free model project worth $55 courtesy of our sister company Design & Make that you can use in the software. At the point of purchasing or upgrading to version 10, you have a one-time opportunity to purchase any of the full collections at a discounted price, where there are four themed model collections to choose from that have been professionally created and are ready to use on your CNC.